Windows 11 is out for sure. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Let's just jump into it. The big focus for 11 is simplification of Windows in the user interface. So this is going to be interesting when I show you my screen, what an old Windows 10 user interface looks like. But the new Windows stores, more improvements, a little better, better performance in multitasking is, is kind of the, the function, which I think with any OS release is kind of the scenario. I can't imagine that you wouldn't improve on performance in multitasking is my point. So iOS, I've been using iOS for, I don't know, a couple decades now, I feel like. The start menu, this is, I love it. The start menu is now a feature. Updated start menu, both centered in the taskbar. Man, they made such a big deal on this. I thought that was amazing. It's right there in the middle that you can find it in case you forgot where the start menu was. Much of the centered appearance is clearly influenced by, guess who? Mr. Tim Cook and the Mac OS, and of course, Chrome. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Windows 11 also has included rounded corners. Rounded corners, we, we have this in a feature on Windows 11. Snap layouts. Okay, I have to give it to them, snap layouts, that's a good feature. I like uh, Snap, I use a, a Snap application inside OS to kind of solve that. I wish uh, OS had that uh, in terms of uh, the Mac. But in general, a nice little feature. They are in advancing it in terms of the new version on Windows 11, which will remember where your apps were stored, which I like. Something to be called Snap uh, Groups, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I like that too, when you, when you have a lot of Windows open. So that's a good feature. That, let's give that one one up, one down. All right, and we'll score this one up, one down. The updates are 40% smaller, thank goodness, because of the blue screen of death and getting an update to, to actually happen is a little bit lethargic in the old version, especially around Windows 10. So if that actually happens, if it's 40% smaller, maybe it's 40% faster. Let's hope that's the case. I don't know if that's gonna be the case. Microsoft is also integrating directly with Teams. This is probably one of the cool things that I do like. However, they made statements in the release that it, you'd be able to reach anybody you wanted. So I'm assuming that that means you could reach anyone with an iPhone that has FaceTime, that may, maybe Microsoft Teams is integrated. However, they were not clear about that. So don't hold me to that. I want to see this happen. They probably should have tested that maybe with an iPhone. That would have been kind of cool. So if you can get in through Windows 11 and actually do a full FaceTime call through Teams, Okay, that is a cool feature if that is actually the case. They are kind of floating away from Skype, which has kind of been the big thing. Uh, and I'm a little concerned about that in the sense there's so much, you know, brand DNA and so many people that are integrated into Skype. I understand the evolution of where Satya Nadella is trying to go, but the opportunity here, I think, of maintaining a good video, uh, you know, calling solution should have been a little bit more seamless. Now, if this does get you to where you can do things like FaceTime, okay, that, that I'm in on. The other thing they did was this whole glass screen uh, overlay that was really positioned in it, which is Microsoft Widgets. Basically, it's a personalized feed, it's powered by AI, and it's built on the widgets that you've seen and you've kind of seen around Windows 10. Uh, so it slides in from the left hand. You can kind of see it right here. It's a very elegant look. It also, you can go full screen with it. I like the, the overlay and widgets. I'm actually a big fan of widgets. I do use them. I like them in bigger screens and bigger displays, but on laptops and mobile devices, absolutely. You've got you've to have a really good gesture model. With Windows and the Surface model, gestures are going to be a big factor. They did have some release on utilizing it in a mobile environment when you go uh, with a Surface where it has the attachable keyboard. So also improving gestures. I think that's a big deal for the tablet side of things instead of you know flipping into tablet mode, which is the old model of ways of doing things. You have to remember, Windows originally, with Windows 10, originally released in 2015. So we're six years in. I think it went, uh, let me just double check. Six years in, release date was July 29th, 2015. Available for general, yeah, general availability was uh, July 29th. So six years in to this particular program and we are just now getting into what I think is modern day OS. Xbox gaming, auto HDR, 
a feature of Xbox Series X and S will be part of the Windows 11. I think that's a very good feature. Direct storage is also gonna be a big part of that. It will require the latest NVMe drives to speed the game up in load times. So we'll see how that's gonna, you know, what that's gonna do to the price of machines to be able to essentially execute on that. Here's the thing, XCOM, uh, the Xbox Game Pass uh, is also being integrated to 11, which I think is another big factor for Microsoft and what they're doing. I do like that. And the fact that now machines are capable of handling, most machines are capable of uh, ha handling most games, that could be a big, big thing for, uh, for Windows 11. Biggest part of Windows 11 is the new store. And again, this goes back to kind of the whole thing. I think one of the big knocks on Windows and Microsoft is the lack of support in the store itself, even though the Android apps are, are in there, but the Microsoft store is going to be redesigned and will support a whole you know, array of new apps. Typically, you're gonna see this uh, available in the Windows App Store, but now you're gonna be able to get to a lot of that. So that's things gonna be Adobe. You know, Here's the thing uh, that I thought was kind of interesting is this whole Android app scenario. So you know, native Android apps would be usable on Windows 11. So that's kind of cool. I like Venmo and Roomba, Roomba, I'm not sure, I don't use one, but I do use uh, Snapchat, Ring, things of that nature, obviously Instagram, TikTok. All of those are, are perfect for it. I like the Ring thing, especially, because that's kind of a little bit clunky and trying to get to your Ring system if you have one at home and it's all tied in, uh, which is uh, pretty big. But I do think there is a big opportunity here for Microsoft. And the reason is, is because the App Store has clearly been a, a massive win for Apple. And Microsoft has really struggled with this. So there's an opening here. This is an opening for Windows to really kind of take it to the next level. And also, when you think about the jab that they took, which was based on their developers can use their own commerce engines, this is the whole thing that basically Apple and you know the game companies are really at odds about. Microsoft will not take a cut. Devs can use their own payment systems if they wanna, which is kind of cool. Uh, Windows has always been kind of uh, this whole idea of you know we're a sovereign place for you as a developer. We'll see how that rolls out because I think the store could become a big profit center for Windows and eventually at the end of the day, these companies are publicly traded. They wanna make money. And when they find out that they've got something that's a winner, they're gonna figure out a way to monetize it. Have to, must do it. There is no release date yet for Windows 11, but the Microsoft uh, team has promised that they're gonna make it a free upgrade from Windows 10. Oh, thanks, I've used it for six years. They could probably charge for this. I think it actually might make it better. The question is, why are they giving it away free? Hmm. Is something else happening? Because Windows has been one of those that is kind of uh, in that whole area where Tim Cook has been going on security and privacy. Sachin Nadella and his team at Windows, not as much, much like Google, uh, in terms of a little less privacy. So maybe is our, how much, in, I'm gonna see the kind of things that Apple pushes out into the market that start, especially around the holidays, because that's what they're planning on releasing this. Could Apple create a whole new plan on being able to move this away. Just as a reminder, here's the Tim Cook statement. I wanna to jump to this headline because it was a good one. Tim Cook says, Android has more malware than iOS and blames all this side loaning. So we're not sure if he is very happy about this, but I can tell you one thing is that Apple and Microsoft are back at a full on war with Windows 11 releasing, especially with all these new features. You know, if I'm gonna give it a rating, here's probably what I'm gonna say. Uh, Cause I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but I just got reminded, cause I don't use this Dell machine that's here on my set very often, but I just got reminded of how clunky Windows is. And I've been, listen, I was a software engineer and project lead many years ago and understood the hardships that we had to deal with with the OS development and where it was at that time, I can only imagine what it is like right now trying to come out with 11. And with the amount of things that you have to set and do, I don't know. Um, I can't wait to use it. Maybe I'll give it a better rating, but so far what I've seen, I'm gonna give this maybe a 7.5 uh, for an OS system. But at the same time, I haven't given the latest OS from Apple much 
better than that, especially M4 chips, which are a whole, don't get me started on the M4 chips, this whole issue and their incompatibility with the Creative Suite and all the different kinds of really graphic uh, enabled software applications from Adobe that you have to have in the M4 has some, some compatibility problems. So this is not an easy win for either company, whether it's Windows and Microsoft or iOS and Apple. This is going to be an interesting next few years. Of course, if you guys are listening to the podcast, make sure and give us some stars over there. Give us a couple of rating points. We love all that good stuff. If you're watching here on YouTube, make sure and subscribe, hit the like button, and make sure and share this video. It's how the algorithm works. It's the Google al algorithm, the YouTube's algorithm. So make sure and use it. That's the way we get uh, great new subscribers and people discovering TechPath content. And again, thanks to all of you for helping us get to our numbers here on the show. It's absolutely growing. Numbers are flying and we're on our way to 100K. If you want to reach me, hit me up on Twitter. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> At Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.